Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to go over uh, programming low sound decoders. You know, I know a lot of you are acquiring uh, locomotives that are factory equipped with low sound decoders, or you're buying new decoders and, and installing them in your existing locomotive fleet. So what I want to do today is go over uh, ways that you can program these decoders, uh, even if you don't have this low programmer hardware device. So stick around for the video. Now, one of the issues with low uh, sound decoders is that they, they can be a little bit difficult to program. And I'll be honest with you, probably the easiest way to do it is if you go ahead and uh, invest 150 bucks roughly to buy one of these low programmers and use the Windows uh, compatible software that you can download for free off of the low sound website. The main limitation of going that route though is this can only be used to program low sound decoders. So wouldn't it be great if there were a way that you could program your low sound decoders just as quickly and easily using Decoder Pro? So let's, that's what I want to talk about today. How can you use the low programmer software even if you don't have the hardware interface like this one here? Now, before we get into how to do that, though, let me cover a couple of things about new low sound decoders because there are some limitations that you need to know about. First of all, when you buy one of these, they don't come with the actual sound projects on them. That is something that has to be uploaded and it's done using the low programmer hardware interface. You have to have this to load it into your decoder. Now, the good thing is most of the dealers that I have dealt with in the past are more than happy uh, to go ahead and load the sound project that you want if you ask them at the time of purchase. Okay, It doesn't do any good for you to get the decoder and then find out, oh, it doesn't have the sound file I need, and then have to arrange to send it back and all of those kind of things. Uh, plus, there might be some dealers out there that I don't know who aren't equipped to upload those files for you. I do know that Streamline Backshop will do it, and all you have to do is go to the Loak Sound website, look up uh, the, the available uh, uh, sound projects, say you want a, a, a 244 prime mover for your RS3, you know, it's right there. You can download it and you can find out the number for it so that you can tell the dealer exactly what you want loaded in your new decoder before you uh, have it shipped to you. Now, for you guys in the UK, most of the uh, uh, sound projects in the UK and a lot in, in mainland Europe uh, are produced by individuals, uh, individual companies, and they are proprietary. So, you know, if, if you want uh, a steam locomotive sound project for the Great Western Railway, say an 060 or a 260 or whatever, uh, you have to go to one of those companies like you choose or Coastal DCC or some of the others, and they will sell you a decoder with those uh, sound files on it. However, it's going to cost you extra. We're lucky here in the U.S. that uh, in order to promote uh, low sound decoders, uh, Matt Herman, uh, who is the head of the of the uh, ESU Loke Sound USA uh, operation has gone out and just collected tons of sound uh, project files and created a lot of different sound projects for locomotives in North America. And you know, those are free to be downloaded and installed. But as I say, you need the Loke programmer hardware and software to do that unless you ask your dealer to do it for you up front. Now, after you receive the, de the uh, decoder and install it in your locomotive, or if you have uh, purchased a locomotive that comes with a low sound decoder, then how do you go about doing the programming? Well, there is one option for you. Obviously, as I say, you can purchase the low programmer. And if you're going to have a large fleet of low sound equipped uh, locomotives, that probably is your best bet. Go ahead and buy this because it is very well equipped in order to uh, do the programming of low sound decoders. 
However, if you've got a mixed fleet, like most people do, you might not want to invest $150 in the Loke programmer itself. So what are some of the other options available to you? Well, what I uh, typically do is I take and download the sound file into uh, the Loke programmer uh, program on my Windows laptop. And then there is a way to transfer all of those CV values that come with it already pre-programmed to the, the uh, uh, Decoder Pro software. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today because it will make things a lot easier because without even having the Loke Sound uh, Programmer here, the Loke Programmer, uh, you can use the Loke Sound Loke Programmer software that you can download for free and you can make all the changes that you want uh, to that sound file, save it, and then export a file that is compatible with Decoder Pro. Then you can open Decoder Pro, create a, a locomotive uh, file, and then load those CV values into Decoder Pro, and you're ready to go with doing the programming of that uh, Decoder Equip locomotive without any problems at all. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. In order to do that, I've got to move over to my laptop, and I'll walk you through the whole process. So. Let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to have to move over to my Windows computer. Okay, uh, here we are in Loke Programmer, and this is just what you would see if you download and install the program on your Windows PC, and um, then start the program up. And uh, as you can see down here on the bottom left, it says no decoder. I don't have the uh, Loke Programmer hardware device even attached at this point. So this is exactly what you would see in, in your situation. So the next thing you want to do here in advance is go to the Loke Sound website. Just look that up on Google. It's easy to find. And when you get there, you can go to the downloads and sound files and just scan through the sound projects there. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward, easy thing to find and do. So I'm going to open it up and uh, open up a new sound project. So let's open it up. I'm going to go to my desktop where I've got my Loke sound files and go to vision okay number five so let's start with an Alco 244 okay and open that project so it's going to open it up and what that does is all of the uh, presets for this specific sound project were stored in the CVs uh, in this project file now you can't get those in decoder pro the reason being that for Decoder Pro, for Loke Sound, it just has the basic uh, decoder type and that's it. It does not have a different Decoder Pro file for every sound project available. Okay, that's just the reality of the way it works. So the only way that you can get all of these CV presets for each sound project that you want to use into Decoder Pro is to open the file first in uh, the Loke programmer, like I've done here, make any changes you want to make, and then save those new CV settings to a text file. And save that to your on, on your computer somewhere. And then we'll open up uh, Decoder Pro, and I'll show you how to create a new file and load those CV settings into it. But let me just show you a few things right off here before we do that. So we started, one thing you might want to change is the address. So let's say it's uh, 4444. Okay, that will now be saved in the uh, CV settings for the address. Let's, let's say a short address of 44. Okay, so now, and then there's other things you could change, your activate functions in consist mode, all the different things that you can change in and edit in a uh, low sound decoder you can do right here uh, without owning the hardware uh, device at all. And then you'll be able to save that and move it to Decoder Pro and use it there. Okay, So there's all these different things that you can do all down through here. And uh, one thing that's particularly useful on here is the information that's available. You can see this is a photo of a DNH Alco 244, and it's got all of this useful information. If you go down here, you can see it tells you the different horns that you can select uh, and, and use. Uh, and they're uh, stored in CV-163. 
So that's something very useful to have. Same thing for the brake uh, squeal uh, templates and also the various air dryers. So you can select any of these various um, options. One thing you'll need to know is the various sound slot settings. So if you look here under sound slots, uh, it has a, an identification for each sound slot used in this file. Now, sound slot one is the Alco 244 prime mover. The uh, switcher horns are in three. Sound slot four are the bell and so on. Now they have recently, they've tried to standardize these sound slots as to what they are. However, there might be sound projects that use different uh, sounds in different sound slots. And like I say, when you get it to Decoder Pro, you do not have this uh, text information here available. All it says is sound slot one and two and three and so on. And so in order to know which uh, sound slot you need to uh, edit in order to increase the volume or make other changes, you need this information right here. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you can save that as well. Okay, but let's assume though that you've gone ahead and made all of these other changes that you want to make uh, as far as editing the file. Okay, now one thing you want to do after you've made changes in the file, before you uh, close it and say or save it as the uh, to the CV list, go ahead and uh, save the file itself. Let's save it as Alco RS3 uh, ESUX. Okay, and that way it's available to you in the future when you want to go back and make some more editorial changes. Also, it goes ahead and it saves all of those changes that you've already made. So let's go ahead and save it. And I'm going to replace it because I did it earlier. So how do you get that uh, into a format that you can uh, save and read into Decoder Pro? Well, go up here to Tools and you see Export CV List. And we're going to do that. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And we're going to call it the RS3. Okay, so it's going to be rs3.txt and we'll save it. And I'm going to say replace the one that's there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a, a look at that in, in just a minute because there's something else I want to show you before I leave Decoder Pro, or yeah, before I leave Look Programmer. Also up in this tools area, there's a thing that says save bulletin. Now let me show you how this works. Okay. So I'm going to save Alco RS3 Bulletin, and we're going to save it to the desktop right here, okay, and save. And we'll say, OK, and it's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and close Loc Programmer since we're done with it. Um, RS3244, and you can see it's got the uh, address uh, change to 44 here in CV1. So we know that we got that taken care of. That's great. And as I said, uh, the bulletin is a very useful thing to have because it provides that same information about the uh, locomotive and, and the like. It gives you the uh, various uh, settings for CV163 to get uh, the proper horn you want. Uh, also the same thing for the bell, the switcher, brake squeal, and the Alco dryer. Now, those you can make modifications to in Decoder Pro by just rewriting a new value to CV164. Okay, so you'll be able to actually test it out. But you need to know these numbers. And they're only here in this, uh, this information file. Now let's go on down here, because this is real important. You can see we have a listing of the function keys, what they control, and the specific sound slot. So for the bell, that's on F1 as usual, and it's under sound slot 4. The horn is sound slot 3, and so on. So when you get to Decoder Pro, if you want to edit the sound volume of the bell, you'll need to know that sound slot 4 controls the bell. Okay, let's go ahead. And what I usually do is print out a copy of this and save it. Uh, for later reference. So I'm going to close this up and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and start uh, Decoder Pro and we'll take a look at that. 
Okay, here we are. I've opened uh, Decoder Pro. So let's create a new loco and we move up to ESU and go down to Loc Sound 5 and we'll just say a 5 DCC. Okay, and we'll open the, pro uh, the programmer. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the new loco file that we've created and we're going to call this our test. Um, RS3 and save that to the roster. Okay, so it's creating that file. Now we're going to go up here and go to import. And if you look here, one option is to import a local programmer CV list file, which is what we want to do. So we open that up and we're going to go directly to uh, the desktop. And find our test.txt file, and it's going to it's uh, importing. You can see right here it says importing local programmer CV list file, and it's done. So now if we go ahead and go to the basic information, you can see it's imported the file, and we've got an address of 44 for the short address that I showed you. Now other things that you can change in here. Let's look at um, the sound levels. Now this is what I told you. You can see we've got sound slot volume one, but it doesn't tell you what it is. So that's where you have to have those list of sound slots to refer to. So we know this is the prime mover and what four was, I believe the bell, three was the horn. So once you have that list, you can go through and make all these changes and edit these as you desire. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll add links to videos in the end screen uh, programming log sound files. So uh, that way you can take a look at that and I'll be doing more of these in the future. But for now, this is just a way for you to quickly and easily uh, import your CV settings from Loc Programmer into Decoder Pro so that you can go ahead and edit the sound file as you desire and, you know, get the locomotive working the way you want. Well, I hope that gives you a head start on uh, programming your new uh, decoders using either the Loc Programmer uh, hardware and software or using the Loc Programmer software without the interface. You know, it makes it a very straightforward operation to do that with Decoder Pro once you know the tricks. So, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll be happy to address them. Bye now.